But people have been moved by that photo for decades. How did you get that photo in the first place? Yeah, I was in a refugee camp one morning and I was looking around, I saw this yeah. one girl with this incredible look, these yeah. eyes and this expression, and, and like everything kind of melted away. People, I think, are more than happy to be photographed if you approach them in the right way. It, it's, it's a bit hard because I tend to be a bit shy. So you really Wait, have to- Wait, you're shy? I, really? I, yeah. I, I, I would not have expected yeah. that from you, that you are shy. McCurry, what's your drink? It's a uh, cider with a. Uh, it was hot, but I made it cold. I put a little bit of ice in it. But we're in Greenwich Village, yeah. in New York City. For people who don't know, this is Cafe Reggio. Reggio. You love this place. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like an old world feel to it. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of being in a. It's a kind of a coffee bar in, in Rome or Milan. Yeah, it's, it has a it has kind a of nice an Italian feel. feel. And it's, I spend a lot of time in Italy, so I kind of feel like I'm coming back to a familiar place. So if people don't know this, for more than 40 years now, right, you've been traveling the world, taking photos, winning multiple awards and recognition. How did you become Steve McCurry photographer? <laughs> well, <I think, laughs> Short answer. <laughs> I, I think in the, in the beginning I wanted to travel. When I was 19, I went to live in Europe for a year. Yeah. And I decided at that time, whatever I did in my life, whatever kind of work I was going to do, I want to travel to be part of it. Right. Uh, I went back to school. I studied filmmaking. Uh, when you were in college, you studied college, filmmaking. But I couldn't get a job, and I decided <laughs> to work on a local newspaper as a, as a photographer. Wait, really? You couldn't get a job? And that was... I, I, I you know... You couldn't get a job in film. In Philadelphia, yeah. I could not get something going in filmmaking. Yeah, it's amazing how many people have that that story of like something failed and so they took a left turn. Yeah, it sounds like that's what you did. Well, the thing about still photography, which was so suited to my personality, is it's kind of a solitary endeavor. It's something you can walk out the door and work. Yeah, not, there's no By script. Yourself. There's no post production. Or, Production. So I, I decided to go in the direction of still photography. I uh, worked on that local newspaper for a couple of years. I got really bored with that repetitive local, uh, news. local news. So you buy a one way ticket, right, to yeah. India it, around this time. Right. A one way ticket, Steve, that's risky as yeah. all get out. What, what was the analysis like, the cost benefit of, okay, I'm going to take this risk, I'm going to go one way to to India and see what happens. How did you make that calculation? Well, I, I had literally nothing to lose. I had worked on the newspaper. That was kind of a dead end for me. And as I said, I wanted to travel. That was my real ambition was to travel. So I thought, you know, when I was in college, I traveled to Africa, I was I traveled uh, on vacations to Latin America, lived in Europe. So one of the last places that I felt I could go to was India. At that time, Russia was a bit closed. China was a bit closed. So I, I thought, you know what, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to... All in. I'm all in, man. I'm going to go to India, and I'm just not going to... I'm oh, going to just give it my best yeah. shot, and uh, I'm not going to give up. It was like dogged persistence. Did it work? Uh, well, I spent two years. I didn't come back for two years. I stayed there continually and, and traveled and photographed and kind of dug for stories and whatnot. And kind of at the halfway point... I just by luck, I went into Afghanistan because it's in the neighborhood. Right. And that was like my big break. Was this time. the trip where you go into what is then like rebel held Afghanistan? Right. The Soviets hadn't invaded yet, and you sneak in right. in a disguise. Is that yeah. right? I had a, I shaved my head, I had a beard. I put on these kind of dirty local, like a costume. So you looked like. I put my cameras in a burlap bag, threw it over my shoulder. So you look like a local, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I was, you know. And we literally crossed the border. We walked right next to these uh, Pakistani soldiers, and not for a minute did they suspect that I was a, a foreigner. I, looked, I just looked exactly like these Afghans. 
okay, that's a little scary, yeah. though. Steve, you could have, I mean, a lot of things could have happened. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know them. I didn't know who they were. They were all armed. We were going into a war zone. Yeah. There was no communication, no roads, no electricity. Do you have a mom back home who was going, please don't do that, please don't do that? <laughs> They've given up on me a long time ago. <laughs> so what happens? You get in there and you take some great shots and you do you sell them to National Geographic or how does that how well, I, 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 I spent about three weeks traveling around with these, these rebels, these mm -hmm. Mojahideen. And at the end of that time, I sent my film back to my family. Right. And had it developed. This is in the days for the young people when you had to develop film, right? right. You had no idea what you have on those roles until no you idea. take it to get developed. So we, we sent the film back, had it developed, and uh, we sent it to a magazine called, uh, it was, it was called Geo. It was called Geo. Uh -huh. And they published some of my work. And uh, and then it went. The whole trail went. Uh, nothing was going on. I went. I went back to Afghanistan, and um, the New York Times picked up some pictures. And then the, the real turning point of the story was when the Russians invaded in uh, later that year, and uh, suddenly my pictures were in demand all over the world. AP, uh, Time, Newsweek, because people all the needed Europe, to show what pictures. was happening. So inside. suddenly my pictures were being published all over the world and then uh, I came back home and uh, I literally went into the, the New York Times picture department and got a standing ovation because wow. uh, I had been sort of supplying them pictures yeah. on a regular basis and, uh, and nobody else was at that time. Did you, did you feel in that period of time, like did you, did you go, okay, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There was no turning back. I was fully committed to this path, and I, I wasn't going to take no for an answer. I wasn't going to give up. It was just this dogged persistence where I was going to do whatever it took to succeed, work crazy hours, and in a way, take crazy risks, which, looking back, I'm not sure that was the best course, but I was willing to... You know, I, I was working on these war zones. Yeah. In, you wouldn't um, do it again? Uh, I, I probably would, actually. <laughs> uh, go back, if you will, to probably your most famous photograph. My dad subscribed to National Geographic when I was a kid. And I'm dating myself, but when your Afghan girl photo was on the cover, I feel like I remember the addition, you know, on the coffee table in my oh, house. Right. Um, I, maybe I'm creating that memory, but I'm pretty sure that you know we were subscribing. So I, I remember seeing it and just and I was about her age. But people have been moved by that photo for decades. How did you get that photo in the first place? Yeah, I was in a refugee camp one morning, and I was looking and I saw this yeah. one girl with this incredible look, these yeah. eyes and this expression, and, and like everything kind of melted away. I thought, if there's one thing I need to do in this classroom is to photograph that girl. And uh, I set about photographing all of her classmates to try and set up a situation where she would feel like, well, what about me? I want to be photographed ah, too. Because I, I was worried if she didn't agree in the beginning that it would be hard to convince her. Maybe her mind right. was made up. But I thought right. if I photograph her friends and her classmates, um, that'll set up a situation where she'll feel maybe excluded and, you, yeah. know, you know, so I was able to, and at first she had her hands sort of covering her face because she was a bit shy, but the teacher was able to convince her that, um, you know, people really need to see you, they need to understand the situation because, uh, you know, the Soviet Union has invaded our country and all of the villages are being destroyed and people need to know that because at that time there were like three million Afghans living in yeah. refugees yeah. up and down the border and Iran and different places. And that, that one photo, I mean, how, how do you describe it? It, it told a story in well, one it was, frame. Well, it was this sort of uh, kind of a, it was a bit ambiguous. It was kind of a mysterious expression. It was, uh, it, it was clear that she was poor, that she had kind of dirt on her face and her, her shawl was ripped. But yet she had this dignity and this sort of perseverance and this sense that um, you know I'm going to move forward. I'm I'm, I'm not going to yield to this circumstance right. that I'm in. And, uh, and you know, so you had this 
kind of haunted quality about the picture, but yet um, she's um, has that determination and, and, and positive look. Yeah, you know. you've said that when you do photograph people, you say hello first. That's that's your entree. It's just going up to somebody because a lot of us, I think, you want to take a photo of somebody, but you're too embarrassed to walk over and say. Is it okay if I take a photo? I, people, I think, are more than happy to be photographed if you approach them the right way, if you explain what you're doing. It's really, uh, people are very generous. I think my enthusiasm, it becomes kind of infectious because I'm so, I think this is a, <laughs> an incredible portrait. This right. person has an incredible look. And I think they sense that and they think, okay, well, I'm going to give this guy a couple minutes. Right, they feel important yeah. in that I, moment. Yeah, a bit flattered. And yeah. I, I think uh, uh, nine times out of ten people on the street, if you stop people and a person in the right way, they'll they'll agree. You just have to. It, it's it's a bit hard because I tend to be a bit shy. So you really wait. Have to, you're shy, I, really? I, yeah, I, I have to really force myself really to go up and, and explain. You know, because you know we all hate rejection. <laughs> and uh, although I know, you, I would not have expected yeah. that from you that you're shy. But I just have to literally push myself to, yeah. to go up. And, you photographed the monsoon in India for a long time, I think, you were there. And there's a famous photo of a man holding a sewing machine right, up over right. his head. He's up to here in water. You had to have been up to here in water too, right? I saw him coming down the street, and I, I immediately realized this is going to be an interesting picture. So, um, and as, as he was approaching me, the neighbors in the na around were kind of shouting to him, oh, the, this foreigner is going to take your picture. You know, get ready, you know. Yeah. And that he has kind of a smile on yeah. his face yeah. because of all these people yelling at him. Right. Yeah, I know you described later that it wasn't the cleanest water. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I first thought I would work from a boat. That didn't work. Then I thought I'd get some waders, and that didn't work. And I thought, you know what, I I'm going to have to just jump in with everybody else. And it was unimaginable. There's dead animals and all sorts of unmentionable things yeah. floating in the water. And I thought, you know what, I, I just and have leeches, to... leeches, right? Leech, a lot of leeches. Yeah, I just, I thought I just have to do this. I, I mean, I don't want to. I can't be timid. I have to be bold. I have to actually do whatever it takes to do this in the best possible way. So I just jumped in. So a lot of people wouldn't take not just the risks, but the, you know, wouldn't wouldn't jump in water filled with leeches. Yeah. Is is there something, um, is there something in your love for your art? that drives you to do all of this, or how do well, you keep I realized, going? I realized that I couldn't do the, the, the work at the highest possible level in the best way if I didn't commit, fully commit to the way to work. Yeah. I just thought, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to be home looking at these pictures and have regrets that I didn't give it my best shot. Right. That would be worse. I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather die than to feel like I, I had, it was, it was, I didn't give it my best effort. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. just, I, I just feel like that, that I, I, I don't want to be, have any regret or remorse about not giving my best effort. You probably could have stopped doing this a while ago, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, a long you know, time fin ago. I don't know, financially, yeah. you probably could have. Yeah, I could go live on a beach in, uh, yeah. somewhere in Hawaii. So why don't you? Oh, I love my work. It's I, I would, I, uh, you know, people say, "Oh, about retiring, all this." I mean, I, I can't imagine not continuing to do what I do. I'm traveling more. I'm having more fun. I think I'm making better pictures now than I did 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, why stop? I have a number of books I'm trying to work on, right. and I just, I'm just having too much fun to. Uh, uh, plus, I have a. Um, <laughs> I have a, a, a 15 month old daughter. Yeah, my, uh, Are you taking her along? Lucia's been around the world three times now. At you know, 15 months old? 15 months old. We've been to uh, Easter Island, we've been to the Arctic, uh, the Galapagos, we've been to Cuba, uh, Italy a couple, two or three times. Wow, this is a Europe. whole new chapter in your life yeah. now. Family so, guy. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. We're having a ball. Uh, my, my, uh, Hope is that she's going to be able to uh, uh, see the world and to be able to see the world as a friendly place and different people, different races and different cultures is something that she's comfortable with and familiar with and that we want her to speak uh, 
several languages. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to create a situation where she's going to have a, a great life and hopefully uh, I'll give her a camera and see what she can do. <laughs> this has been so interesting, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>